Hello, hope you're doing well. This is another video about optimization. In this problem, I'm going to talk about a paper cup. You know the paper cups that you get from a water dispenser that's shaped like a cone? How are they constructed? Why do they have that certain shape? So this is what I want to talk about. If you want to dispense a certain amount of water, or you want that cup to hold a certain amount of water, how should you construct the cup so that you have the least amount of paper possible? In other words, you want to be a little bit sustainable here. You want to be economical. So here's a precise wording of the problem. Suppose I have a cone-shaped paper drinking cup to hold 27 cubic centimeters of water. I want to find the height and radius of the cup. In other words, kind of the shape of the cup. How tall is it? How wide is it? That uses the smallest amount of paper. <laughs> Up until now, we've talked about the volume of a cone, but we've never talked about the surface area of a cone. So to make our life a little bit easier here, I did a little bit of searching. I just typed in cone and I typed in an S and lo and behold, I have the surface area of a cone. And in fact, there's lots of different formulas that you can choose here. Now, this is the surface area of a cone, and this is actually the one for a closed bottom on the cone. What we really want is something called the lateral surface of this. In other words, just the sloped part of it, not the bottom. And I know I'm going to turn this upside down because I got to put water inside of it. But there's a closed surface area and an open surface area, a closed top surface area, and a closed top surface area. So the question, if I go back, I have 27 cubic centimeters to use here. So I know a volume equation is going to come into play. So let's see how I do this. Okay, so I draw my picture. I'm really not going to use this picture that much because, well, I have an H and an R on here. And what's given in the problem? Well, I know the volume is 27 cubic centimeters. So I know that my volume formula, one third part pi r squared h, if I combine this with the 27, 27 times 3 is 81. If I solve for h, I get 81 divided by pi r cubed. That's what h is. I could also solve for r as well, but I'm choosing to solve for h in this problem. It is totally up to you. Now, the sur surface area of a cone, there's a closed top and an open top. We want the open top formula. We want this one because we want to put water inside the cup. We don't want a lid on this thing. Pi r times the square root of h squared plus r squared. There's two variables there. I want to convert this all into one variable. What does that mean? It means solve. Oh, solving for one of the variables and making a substitution. So if I make that substitution, I get pi r times h squared, but h is 81 over pi r squared plus h squared. Now I have not plus h squared, plus r squared, plus r squared. Now I have a function for the surface area in one variable. This is an open interval problem. Because I can make r as large as I want. And if I make r, say, a thousand, h is going to be really, really tiny, but it's still going to have 27 cubic centimeters of volume. It will be unusable, but it still exists. So this is an open interval problem. So we cannot use a closed interval method here. So at this point, I hope you know how to finish this problem. You're going to have to take a derivative. I suggest using some software to do this. 
setting that derivative equal to zero, finding the critical values, and then going through a first or second derivative test for this. I suggest using the first derivative test to actually classify your critical values in terms of mins and maxes. And that's what I'm going to do for this problem. I'm going to stop it here. This is the complete setup. I'm going to leave it up to you to finish the calculus on it. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, just send me an email. Have a good day. Be safe.